I don't want you just to blog really general stuff. I want you to be seen as an expert in your particular area of the country. And that's going to bring you more local people. And if it's something more like helping people decide what time of year to get married, they may not have chosen a venue yet. So um, there's good traffic and then there's useless traffic. Uno, dos, tres. explain to anyone who's not familiar that Google Analytics is just a free product from Google that tracks your website visitors and it knows things like how long someone spends on your site, how many people are coming to your site, um, where they're coming from. Um, you can even see cool things like, okay, all of these visitors, here's where they're coming from and then here's which platforms actually bring you the most engagement. So you'll be able to say, okay, people that come from Google tend to spend three minutes on my website, whereas people who come from Pinterest only spend 35 seconds. So as you get a little deeper in your marketing and you want to use data to make decisions about maybe where your time is spent, Google Analytics is a great tool to use because you can actually see what marketing methods are driving you the best traffic. And I'm so glad you ask about this because this is one of the things that I nerd out about as someone that's outside of the wedding industry that a lot of wedding pros haven't really thought of. And so I see people, I see Pinterest experts just talking about how much traffic they're driving. And I'm like, wait, 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 is this good traffic? Are these people that will actually book with you or inquire with you? Um, the data will tell us which you know, content is getting traffic to it. And we can make some decisions about is Pinterest actually driving business or not? Mm. Um, so there's a difference then between good traffic and bad traffic I'm hearing. There's good traffic and there's useless traffic. So okay. here's a really good example. So I work with a venue group on the East Coast and um, they've done a really good job over the years having a marketing department that's devoted to blogging. They're like, we're gonna blog once a month. Um, so they have hundreds of blog posts. And so they brought me in and they said, you know, take a look at this. I think we're doing pretty well. And I said, okay. So I got in there, got real geeky with the data. And I recognized that, yes, they were bringing in a lot of traffic, but a lot of the cases, it wasn't anyone who was ever going to book their venue in the Boston area. And here's the reason why. They were writing blog posts on topics like when to send your wedding invitations. So they were getting all of this traffic from Google, from people that were searching for things like when to send my wedding invitations, when to send my save the dates, et cetera. But I want your venue owners to think about what the problem with that might be. It's that people that are thinking about sending their wedding invitations probably have chosen a venue already. Mm. And so here you are bringing in all of these people who, yeah, they're gonna get married, but they've already chosen a venue, they're never going to book with you. And also you're bringing in traffic from all over the country. Um, so not just people in the Boston area. So when we have a location-based business, I really recommend that vendors spend their content creation time becoming a local expert in their area. So instead of this strategy where they were blogging about when to send your wedding invitations, I said, why don't you blog about fall weddings in New England? Give your best tips, show off your venues in the fall. Um, talk about things people might not recognize about fall weddings in New England. Maybe it's really cold by November and you need to have a backup plan. I don't want you just to blog really general stuff. I want you to be seen as an expert in your particular area of the country. And that's gonna bring you more local people. And if it's something more like helping people decide what time of year to get married, they may not have chosen a venue yet. So um, there's good traffic and then there's useless traffic. That's so powerful. That's so much gold right there. Like if the whole podcast was just that, I feel like that was pound for pound the best advice I've ever heard about this because you're totally right. There's a lot of, I think, I know I've done it in my business, like useless effort. You go, it's like, oh, it's Father's Day. It's Valentine's Day. It's whatever. And you create this themed blog article or even a video or whatever. And you're spending time, resources, effort, energy, you're directing your team towards getting this done. And it's, 
you're totally right. It's your wedding invitations is kind of, you know, you're two months out. Yeah, You're <laughs> you too know? far into two the planning out. process. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really important thing to think about. What are people wondering about before they make a decision to hire someone of your vendor category? So my full service wedding planner clients, they have to get to people when they're still deciding like, am I going to have a destination wedding in Boston or not? Um, do I want an outdoor wedding or not? So they have to be so early in that decision process. It doesn't make any sense for a full service wedding planner to create an article about how to put together your seating chart. Because it's, again, they're way too far into their wedding planning process. Um, and that's also not something that someone that's interested in a full service planner would ever Google for.